have a gut feeling this kind of stuff's going to be hitting this year at a steady pace. So, it's been a little while since we've talked about PR disasters for moves for major Hollywood stars. I mean, we kind of did with Joss Whedon, but that, that was a little bit more of a very specific deep dive. I'm talking about when I've had to talk around characters such as Gina Carano or James Gunn or Johnny Depp or Amber Heard. So we've got a little bit of that sort of situation again. This time, Evangeline Lilly, known for many things, be it Lost, be it being uh, stuck with a romantic love triangle subplot in the Hobbit movies, even after she was explicitly told they wouldn't do that to her, to more recently playing the Wasp in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. She has been cropping up in the news for uh, around about a month now, off and on, related to anti-vaccine sentiments, statements, and support. So... I kind of want to talk about this because it's, I, I always do find it interesting to look at how these things are playing out and also to compare it to what has happened before and some of the other times that I have talked about this and one other time when I haven't, but is relevant. We'll get to that. Don't worry about it. So with Evangeline Lilly, let's first of all cover the basic facts of what has gone on. This kind of kicked off when she was spotted at an anti-vaccination rally and then later posted images from said rally and voiced her support for um, being against vaccine mandates on Instagram. Now that already kind of kicked off a not great um, just general sentiment around her. We'll talk about fallout and uh, what people think should happen and what I think will happen, not necessarily making a massive judgment statement on what should or shouldn't in this particular case, but we'll get to that. But as you would expect, um, because a lot of the concerns around the kinds of people who decry vaccination and vaccination mandates, um, there was a lot of concerns and more than a few people, fans uh, especially, have been asking for her to be removed from the uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And when she started posting this stuff, even some of her co-stars, without naming her in specific, but the timing makes it pretty clear it's in response to that, clearly were uh, not okay with what was being said or what she was associating herself with. And association is actually kind of going to be an important thing when we get to the next thing that happened. More recently, she put out a video basically encouraging Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to sit down and talk with the people running the convoy protests in Ottawa. If you don't know what's going on there, really, really, really quick. A bunch of people who are against vaccine and mask mandates and some other stuff along those lines, but that's the main thing, have basically used a convoy, a, you know, a number of large trailer-carrying trucks to block traffic in Ottawa, which is the Canadian capital, uh, as a form of protest. It has actually jammed up a lot of commerce. It has hurt both the Canadian and the American economies. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's been a whole thing. And she put out a video basically saying, hey, Prime Minister, why aren't you talking to these people? And that, honestly, <laughs> that's where we get into that uh, association thing that I mentioned before. Because, unfortunately, whether she is aware or not, whether she cares or not, I don't know. But the fact is that some of the people, not all, but some of the people involved in this convoy have been waving around things like Confederacy flags and swastika imagery. And this is kind of the point where, this, here's the thing. I don't personally really know too many anti-vaccination people, anti-mandate or anti-vax. But what I will say, if I'm going to extend any kind of olive branch, 
is if you're only against mandates, like government mandates, if that's all that you're against, which is all she's really said firmly that she has an issue with, um, she hasn't been as much like that vaccines are bad, but it's been a bit more of a you can't say what we can do with our bodies approach. That's So that's kind of been her angle. The olive branch that I will extend is that if that is the angle that you come at this from, it puts you in a very precarious position because there's a lot of incredibly unsavory and downright dangerous elements that are not just fringe, but are pretty prominent within anti-vax sentiments because anti-mandate puts you in touch with anti-vax, anti-vax puts you in touch with a lot of conspiratorial stuff and conspiratorial stuff puts you in touch with QAnon and all this other stuff that gets real toxic real fast. And so I will express a certain amount of sympathy insofar as if that is truly all that she has an issue with is the mandates, that does put her in a tough position where she is just by the nature of what she's standing for, standing next to some really unsavory people. That said, actually calling for Justin Trudeau to speak with the convoy specifically, when not only is this known about some of the elements in the convoy, but Trudeau himself has called that out. So basically, he's already said, I see some of the incredibly dangerous, hateful sentiments and imagery being shown in this convoy, and that is why I think it's dangerous. For you to then go, I think you should talk to them. That's... Hmm. It's not a great look, <laughs> but that, that's the basic core of what has gone on at time of recording. If I'm really unlucky between when I shoot this and when it's supposed to go up, more stuff will happen and I'll have to reshoot this entire thing. But if you just heard me say that, nothing else major happened and I get to just put it up as is. We'll see. So... It's interesting to talk about how the fallout has come around this. As I said, there have been calls amongst fans to replace her uh, within the MCU. The thing is, this is a little bit different than if we were to compare, I feel like in many ways, one of the most relevant comparisons is to Gina Carano, who got in trouble and uh, ultimately was uh, not uh, allowed to return for Star Wars related things, uh, specifically on The Mandalorian, and she might have even been considered for her own spinoff show before that, because uh, she expressed a number of things, including anti-mask, anti-vaccination sentiments, but it also then snowballed into uh, conspiracies around the election, and uh, ultimately the straw that broke the camel's back was uh, making uh, comparisons of things that she was talking about to the Holocaust, which that that was the point that pretty much everyone, and we're done. And so far, at least, Evangeline Lilly does not appear to be on the same path for a couple of reasons. She has, as I said, really narrowed down her public statements and her social media posts to specifically the idea of mask mandates. And so far, it has not ballooned out into all this other stuff that uh, happened with Gina Carano. Now, it is interesting because we know with Gina Carano, it was told to her by both her uh, actual uh, management in terms of you know her talent agents and the people who she worked for at Disney and at Lucasfilm, you need to stop causing all these stirs. And then she didn't, and that's when her contract wasn't renewed. With Evangeline and Lily, it's possible that those conversations could be happening I'm slightly less inclined to think that they would be in this case, though, because as I said, it's much more narrowly focused um, than the issues uh, that went on with Gina Carano were. That said, it's not impossible. There may be conversations going on with her, um, but I, I kind of doubt it. So the question then becomes, would they actually remove her or would they keep her? And this is where I kind of want to make another comparison to someone who I haven't talked about before. And that's Letitia Wright, who plays Shuri in the Black Panther movies. Now, I didn't talk about Letitia Wright previously because a lot of what's gone on around her and the conversation around her has been highly speculative to a degree that I wasn't really comfortable debunking a lot of it. Because the amount of concrete things around her and what's going on is way less than people seem to think. 
because I saw some bonkers stuff thrown around as fact in my own comment sections, then looked into it and went, maybe that's possible. That I seriously doubt. So quick breakdown there. Uh, late last year, Letitia Wright shared a video on social media, and that original video had a number of things going on. It had anti-vax was the main thing about it, but there was also some transphobic stuff. And it was a very unpleasant video. It's a video that's not even up on YouTube anymore. It was found as violating terms of her service. So the thing's gone. Now, she has a certain amount of deniability in that she did not create that video. She simply shared it. And when called out for that, her response was, I'm going to go with soft because she didn't double down, which is also something Evangeline and Lily so far as not really done. She, Evangeline and Lily is stuck to her guns at the same level, but she hasn't doubled down the way Gina Carano did. Letitia Wright basically said, look, I'm not saying that these are my thoughts. I'm saying we should be asking questions about these things, which, you know, still inclines me to think those probably were her thoughts. But at the very least, it demonstrates uh, an understanding that it would be very bad for her to say that out loud. So since then... Most of the things that have been reported about Letitia Wright have been misconstrued or highly speculative. So during the filming of the sequel to Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, she uh, went back to uh, Britain because she sustained an injury on set that was initially believed to be a minor injury. When she actually got back home and was being treated, it was found out she had, a, a, it was either a fractured collarbone or a fractured shoulder uh, it was one of the two, and a concussion. So it was a much more serious injury than expected. So that lengthened the amount of time that the production was put on hiatus, because they shot everything they could shoot without her, but then they had to hold and wait for her. And that went on longer than thought uh, initially because she needed more time to recover. Now, it got reported, it got said in The Hollywood Reporter, who, and this, they didn't say this was the case, but they speculated it might be, and then I saw it repeated elsewhere as if it was fact, which was there was speculation that since she is likely unvaccinated, it might be difficult for her to get back into the country because some of the restrictions that were going on with travel at the time, and she might not be able to resume filming. Now, we don't know for a fact whether or not Letitia Wright is or isn't vaccinated. Given the stuff that she shared before, I would say it's likely, and it's not an unfair assumption to say, that she is not vaccinated. But we don't know that for a certainty. And there was definitely never any official statements that that was part of the delay in her returning. That was simply speculated upon. Another thing The Hollywood Reporter said was that she was espousing anti-vax views on set. That's never been backed up by any other reporting, and it was an anonymous source on that, which doesn't make it untrue, but it does make it not have a lot of foundational fact behind it. Now, the reason I bring all that up in a video about Evangeline Lilly is I think there's a decent chance Marvel will cut Evangeline Lilly loose, but I don't think they're going to cut Letitia Wright loose. Um, because there's a little bit of difference going on here. You could make, on the one hand, in both cases, they in the films that we've seen so far at least, they are important supporting characters, but not the core leads, so why is it different? Well, first of all, the reporting on Wakanda Forever is that Shuri is going to be put front and center as a much bigger focus, if not the actual lead character of the film, since Chadwick Boseman, very regrettably, passed away. So there's that, first of all. But second of all, Evangeline Lilly, who has already shot Ant-Man 3, for the record, so she's appearing in that no matter what, because it's already filmed. But that, if that is done the way most of these sorts of uh, individual series have been done with Marvel, that's probably going to, if not be designed as a complete closeout of a trilogy, going to be designed as a, well, that works as a stopping point for this story. They did it with Iron Man 3. The intention is to do that with Guardians of the Galaxy. I know we are getting a fourth one, but they did pretty much do that with uh, Thor Ragnarok. These things are largely being set up as little trilogies of films. Now, of course, she could still appear in any number of things after that, but if narratively, the Wasp's use and the things that, like, audiences 
would have expected of the character are fulfilled by the end of the third Ant-Man, well, then they don't really need to bring her back. And again, it's not like she's actively shooting something that they need to fire her from. It can be a bit like the Gina Carano thing. Now, while it was reported Gina Carano was fired, the truth is her contract was not extended. Uh, so there is a slight difference in that. And that I could see also happening with Evangeline Lilly. They simply choose to not pick up her option. Because even if they are or were originally planning to include her in, say, whatever the next big team-up movie is, be it Avengers or something else, that, whatever that ends up being, is in very early planning stages right now. Like, the Marvel Cinematic Universe at the moment, in the wake of Endgame, has backed off the big, massive team-ups. They're doing a bit more crossover continuity stuff, but the cross-franchise um, team-ups have eased off a bit, at least in terms of big multiple characters. We're seeing a bit more casual um, inter uh, interactions and crossovers with things like Doctor Strange showing up in Spider-Man No Way Home. But the big stuff seems to all be on hold because Endgame was so big, they kind of have to like wait before trying to do that again. They have to wait for the memory to, of Endgame to fade at least a little. So whatever is going on with those right now, that's in early planning stages. Early enough that if they had been planning to use her, they could remove her. With Letitia Wright, if she is becoming as front and center as it is believed that she would be, then that's going to be harder to cut her loose, especially if this was conceived as a middle chapter in ultimately... Um, what may end up being a three-film story, as some of these have ended up being. So with Letitia Wright, I think cutting her loose is going to be a lot more noticeable. I have a feeling, and granted we haven't seen the movies yet, so I could be wrong about this, but I have a feeling that by the end of the third Ant-Man movie, most people will probably be okay if the Wasp doesn't come back. I mean, that's not to say they aren't fans of the Wasp, but I'm saying they won't feel like, oh, but we didn't, like, get that full character story. And I think that's probably more likely to be the case with Shuri in the follow-up Black Panther. Now, the other thing is that Letitia Wright, after that stuff went down, basically deleted all of her social media stuff, which means she has not gotten into more trouble at least publicly. As I said, there were the reports of her possible on-set behavior, and if that is true, that might be the one thing that could cause issue because um, it, it creates just a bad working environment. And if other actors don't want to work with her because she's going off on conspiracy narratives on set, allegedly, then that's a much bigger problem because as long as she stays off social media, she's not going to be a PR problem again. So as long as that isn't the case, which I said, I'm not, I'm not really sure I believe that. It, a Hollywood Reporter also said that she uh, replaced her management, her talent management, uh, and that may have been over her views on vaccination. Again, it's a lot of innuendo. And I'm not saying it's implausible or definitely not true, but there just isn't a lot behind that right now. So unless she really starts going full-blown conspiracy nut or gets back onto social media and starts sharing that stuff again, I think she's probably going to be okay. Evangeline Lilly, on the other hand, while, I, as I said, she is not doubling down and getting into worse and worse and worse sorts of things that connect to being anti-mandate, that is something that she is not keeping quiet about. You know, she had her initial appearing at the protest and then later on the video uh, directed at Justin Trudeau. That said, it's still at least a little bit better than Gina Carano because Gina Carano is basically just throwing this stuff out into the ether. Evangeline Lilly does appear to be doing it in a much more targeted political way, like addressing it specifically at the prime minister and, uh, you know, actually showing up at a protest as opposed to just trying to tick people off with online posts. So she does seem to have the strength of her convictions a bit more. Whether or not that's actually going to be of any help to her in either her image or maintaining this role, I don't know. I'm inclined to say probably not. But certainly if you were to compare, I don't think it'll be 
if if she never appears again as the wasp, I don't think it'll be the harsh distancing. We got to get her away from this stuff and we don't want her name associated with what we do sort of thing that happened with Gina Carano. I don't see that happening with Evangeline Lilly unless she falls down the rabbit hole of far more conspiracy laden and harmful stuff. Um, and that's not to say there aren't problems with being anti-mandate, but that's at least a philosophical position. I think most people can at least understand, even if they don't agree with. It's just that it it can send you down a rabbit hole into stuff that's, frankly, pretty indefensible. But she's not there right now. So I don't see the harsh backing away and not wanting any association from her. That happened with Gina Carano. That being said, I will not be surprised, and I'm kind of expecting that her appearance as the Wasp in Ant-Man Quantumania will be the last time we'll see her in the MCU. So that's that's where things are at, and that's what I think is the most likely trajectory. What are your thoughts on all this? And I know, I know that mandates, vaccinations, et cetera, are very heated, very personal topics, Try and be respectful to me, to Evangeline Lilly, to Letitia Wright, and to each other in the comments. As long as you can do that, drop something down in the comments, let's talk about it. Patreon is how I am able to do this as my living. Any support you can give me does help ensure that this whole thing keeps going. But even if you're not able to do that, like, shares, and subscribes also help me out. There's a whole bunch of links down there as well to all sorts of stuff. I have books for sale. I have merch. I'm on Twitch. Check all that out. But don't worry too much about it either. Because at the end of the day, what I really want you to remember is that you are beautiful, you are valid, and you are loved. You're the council. I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned. Patreon shout outs. Thank you to Turok, Shane Ross, Oliver B, Melinda Walters, Robin Powell, Pronobulax, The Poodle, Edelon, Tracy Scrabbit, Dharma Michael Doyle, Vincent Paul Bartolucci, Angry Caspero, Adam Lefty Taylor, Robin Moore, Shayla Gourlay, and Bookworm. You can support me as well. Hear me mispronounce your name. I'm sure I got some of those wrong. <laughs>